Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. This is another quick hitter edition. I'm Scott Bernstein. We're going to go over some breaking news out of New York City and the Genovese crime family, the West Side. Um, this past week in federal court out of Manhattan, we had uh, three pretty major players in, in the Genovese uh, organization uh, sentenced to prison for a uh, spring spring 2002 racketeering bus, sports gambling extortion there might have been some loan sharking i'm not positive uh but uh it took down two capos um and then a soldier that was uh sentenced this week and then another handful of guys behind them but the you know the three biggest names in this bust uh were you know nikki slash khaleesi um 64 year old capo uh ralph the undertaker balsamo who I would say up and comer uh, at at fifty one, fifty two years old, but he's been you know on the radar for for at least 15, 20 years. So if people have been paying attention, he's a guy that uh, you might have known about, but now seems like his stars beginning to rise. And then uh, an, a, a fast rising soldier, John Campanella. So Balsamo uh, got the uh, harshest sentence, three years. Um, Nikki Khaleesi got two years and John, John Campanella got one year. Um, seems like, you know, slaps on the wrist for federal investigation that was for all intents and purposes up and running for a decade. Um, it got more focused in the last, uh, you know, in, in the late, 2010s until the bus came down in April 22, but um, it had been being built in one way or the other since the early 2010s. And uh, Nikki Slash Khaleesi is a is a guy that's kind of been a sleeper. We didn't really know a lot about him until this bus came down. Um, and uh, he's a Bronx guy that runs all of the Genovese rackets in South Florida. His kind of right hand is this John Campanella, 48 years old, who's a soldier and uh, has a lineage in the Genovese organization. And according to sentencing reports and court records, Campanella, very trusted by Nikki Slash. And Nikki Slash uses Campanella as a liaison to uh, other New York mafia families. Campanella's dad is a button in, in the Genovese and his uncle is deceased uh, Genovese capo Louis Moscatello uh, who flipped at the end uh, of his mob career and was on the verge of testifying in court in a labor racketeering case and uh, died in prison of natural, natural causes. Uh, he had been the Genovese um, point man in the Bronx for local politics. He actually ran for city council at one point in the early 80s. Um, but his his real legacy in the mob, uh, Uncle Louie for, for John, was uh, he, he was a major uh, construction labor racketeer uh, in the drywall industry, the cement industry, and uh, controlled a lot of that stuff in like three of the three of the boroughs. So uh, this is a guy that that Nikki Slash uh, has a lot of confidence in. Um, but in terms of kind of name recognition, even though he was probably the number two defendant in the case was Ralph Balsamo, the under uh, the undertaker. Uh, his nickname comes from the fact that he owns a funeral home in, in the Bronx. Uh, he is allegedly close or very close to, the boss, uh, Barney Balomo, the right now is, you know, this is the top guy in 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 the Big Apple right now, probably across all the five families. He he's the number one boss amongst bosses. Uh, just incredibly smart, feared, respected, stealth, uh, and and Balomo has been in his 
good graces for 20 years uh, or so. Uh, they went down in a 2006 racketeering bust and uh, together where uh, Balsamo actually ended up doing more time, uh, I believe, than, than Barney, or at least they did pretty similar sentences, despite one being at that point, maybe not even a soldier, but possibly a soldier. Um, and, and Barney at that point was a, you know, acting boss um, or boss. He became an acting boss in the late nineties. Um, he, in terms of uh, Ralph Balsamo, what I hear is Barney looks at him as a, as a future administrator. Uh, he's a guy that's very well connected, uh, rackets in, in the Bronx, uh, rackets in Manhattan, uh, rackets out in the suburbs of Westchester. And um, one thing that was of note in the sentencing report uh, with Balsamo, first uh, they showed evidence uh, of, of Balsamo's proximity to Barney with a photo uh, that popped up online, then it popped up with Jerry Capace and Gangland News, then it makes its way into court record, which was a, a photo that was snapped of a group of Genovese guys uh, at Barney Belomo's 65th birthday party and uh, only a year or two ago. And Ralph Ralph Balsamo was, was in that photo. They wanted to show uh, what kind of weight he had by by running with, with someone like Barney. And uh, then there was also a situation that was laid out where it kind of re reminded me of an episode of Sopranos where when Christopher Moltisante becomes a made guy those first couple months or I, it might have been within a you know, within the timeline of the show it might have been a couple episodes after he was made I'm not positive but I if, if you remember there was a whole storyline where he was getting stuck with the bill everywhere they went and he was getting sick of it and he would complain to tony about it at, at one point him and paulie ended up getting into a huge fight over it and uh there was an incident that happened in, in, back in the fall of 2019 when an underling of of uh balsamo's and nikki khaleesi's were uh, didn't pay for the lunch that they had had together and was chastised um, for only, well, I should say he paid for Balsamo, um, but didn't pay for Nikki Khaleesi, who was the higher ranking Genovese at that point. Uh, and he was told as they, it, there was a wire, it, it sounds like it was in a car, maybe it was in a, a social club, maybe someone was wearing it, I don't know, but right after um, the, uh, the lunch, this guy was told, you know, you made a mistake um, by not showing Nikki Slash um, the requisite respect that he deserved and that you were catering more to Ralph Balsamo instead of Nikki Slash. Uh, he said he didn't understand it. He said, I, I don't know Nikki. I know Ralph. That's why I paid for Ralph. This guy is like, no, Nikki's the guy you got to worry about. And if you pay for Ralph, you got to pay for Nikki. Um, it's a bad look if you don't do it. This guy uh, ends up texting Balsamo, asking Balsamo in the text if he offended Nikki Khaleesi, and, and Balsamo eased his concerns and said, no, I don't think uh, Nikki was aware of what's going on. It's okay. But it was it was funny that they put that in there. And then another thing that I, uh, I noticed by reading some of the, the sentencing reports and, and court files was that uh, the span of this investigation is a, a nice lens into Ralph Balsamo, who went from a soldier at the beginning of the investigation to an acting capo, uh, to a point where I think he was in prison for a couple of years, came back out, became a full-fledged capo. Um, so you kind of see his rise in the organization through the lens of this bust. And then I'll end, I'll end this on, uh, on this note that, uh, Sometimes people wonder how much attention the wise guys themselves pay to what's being written or said about them, reported about them. And with Ralph Balsamo uh, in a, I think it was a 10 month time frame. It might've been 
longer or shorter, but in a certain amount of time between, I believe, 2019 and, and 2020, um, or maybe it was between 21 and 22. Um, I apologize for not being zeroed in on the specifics, but uh, when the feds took his, they took 10 phones of his, he had 10 phones, which he was communicating with. And uh, on one of these phones, there was like a dozen Google searches um, that were like Ralph Balsamo and mob, Ralph Balsamo and Genevieve's crime family, Ralph Balsamo and Barney Belomo. Uh, so he was doing a lot of Googling um, <laughs> of himself. So uh, they're, they're headed to prison for, uh, you know, it's kind of a cup of coffee. Uh, if you get three year sentence, you're going to be home in two years into a halfway house. The guy that's doing a year, John Campanella, he'll do probably six months, eight months and hit a halfway house. Nikki Slash will do a year and a half, then hit a halfway house. So uh, I don't really see this tripping them up. In fact, I kind of wonder, you, you spent 10 years in this investigation and, and these are the top guys and the most you're going to do is send, send these guys away for two, three years. It, it seems like Seems a bit futile. So uh, that's the quick hitter update on the Genovese crime family, the cases that just came down, the sentences that just came down. I'm Scott Bernstein for Benny Behind the Glass and for Jimmy. He'll be back on the full uh, full length episode this week. I say OG Pod out. Mm -hmm.